Today, we're going to be comparing these two, the Logitech G wheels and the Fanatec CS LDD. I know, I know it's not a fair comparison, but it's not supposed to be. In the past, I have compared the Logitech G29 against the T300 and the T300 against the Fanatec CSL Elite. These videos have been watched hundreds of thousands of times for a good reason it informs the viewers if it's worthwhile to spend more for the more expensive wheel or not. Since most of the direct drives have dropped a lot in terms of price compared to the Logitech wheels, it's a worthwhile comparison. Before Going there, both wheels were sent by the respective brands, and I have an affiliate link with Fanatec. First of all, technical specs. They couldn't be any more different. That's basically the reason for this video. The Logitech G wheels have a gear driven system that boasts around 2.5 Newton meters of torque. The Logitech G wheels have been around for a long time. They are proven to be reliable. They have a, a gear driven system and around 2.5 Newton meters of torque. The steering wheel design will depend to which wheel you're going to take. The Logitech G29 and 923 system will have basically the same steering wheel and the 920 will be Xbox compatible, but will have a different wheel. The G923 will be compatible with PlayStation or the Xbox, depending on what you buy. In the box, it comes with a three pedal pedal set and also it has a compatibility for the Logitech shifter. So essentially it's already prepared bundle for you to race on. Okay, yes, I know the CSLDD will walk all over the Logitech G29. It won't even be a fair comparison. It's a direct drive with five Newton meters. You can do an upgrade to eight Newton meters if you want to. It's Xbox compatible depending on the wheel and PC compatible as well. There's a bunch of choices for ready to race and they start at $399. And then you also have the whole ecosystem with different steering wheels, which you can use the QR for. Then there's a lot of ecosystem out there, pedals, steering wheels, shifters, handbrakes and so on. So it is very flexible for Fanatec. Because of this main issue or main contention points about these two wheels will start to arise will be price incompatibility. The G29 is around $200 more or less, sometimes more, sometimes less. The G923 is around $280 to $350. And this is of course with console compatibility. It doesn't matter if it's the Xbox or uh, the PlayStation version. CSL though, it starts at 400. This is with a basic two pedal set and the steering wheel going all the way to 800 for a full kit or a PlayStation compatible DD Pro. DD Pro is this one. It's basically the CSL DD, but in a slightly different format, it has the PlayStation compatibility while the CSL is PC or Xbox. Anyways, you might need to spend $30 on a desk clamp and desk clamp isn't really that good in my opinion, while the G wheels will have them integrated. So right here, we have probably the main problem with the Logitech versus the CSL DD. The Logitech will be compatible with pretty much everything, depending on what you buy, of course, but the price will always be the same. The CSL DD, not really. It's PC and Xbox, and apparently most people actually drive or sim race in PlayStation. And this difference is actually one of the most commented differences I've seen, basically in all the videos and shorts I do about all of these two wheels. They always say the CSL DD is not PlayStation compatible, and they're right. And for many people, this is an absolute deal breaker. Now, to be fair, if you don't care about the PlayStation or you just drive on the Xbox, you can try to justify, or it's possible to justify a jump from 200 or 350 if you buy the G923 into 400 and get all of those uh, features that the CSL DD will have. But let's be honest, it's not justifiable at all saying, well, I'm going to jump from a 200 wheel into a 600 one if I want the PlayStation compatibility. As for the wheelbase, there's really no comparison. Still, the Logitech is good. It gives really good detail and have what I call the Logitech feel. There's a bit of notchiness, but that notchiness transmits relevant information or details to your driving experience. The force feedback isn't really bad at all. It's a wheel that does force feedback basics extremely well. Both the G29 or the 93 have basically all the necessary tools for an accurate driving. There is true force, which is basically haptic feedback into the wheel to further increase sensations. The downside is that it does require a title that supports it and it needs to be well calibrated in a wheel and in the game. To be honest, it only works at a decent level at Gran Turismo 7, where the sensations are improved. In Competizione, it makes the wheel feel hollow. Increasing the values will make the wheel feel like an old cell phone vibrator motor. If you really want to get the experience of what your force is meant to be, you need to check out the Logitech Direct Drive. In comparison, the CSL is far crispier, far smoother and far faster and stronger. It's an almost totally smooth drive and there's so much more detail. 
The bass has quick and snappy reactions, the performance is very consistent through the sims, and because of it, it really opens the flexibility to many types of driving, road racing, cruising if you do know HESI, or even drifting. It also has a huge ecosystem of wheels and shifters and pedals and all of that, and that will basically uh, create the experience just for you, but it does come at a cost. Performance-wise for the pedals, the Logitech pedals might have a better break against the two pedal set from Fanatec. When you start looking forward to upgrade pads, the Fanatec pedal set has a load cell and clutch pedal option, and then there's also modding. Both ecosystems have a good modding scene, but Logitech at this point has a far bigger one because it has been in the market for so long. You have multiple options out there, change of rubber, change of spring, also on the Fanatec as well. And in the case of the Logitech, there's even something called the AXC True Brake that I have bought in the past, and it's a really good improvement to your braking. It almost feels like a load cell. Still in terms of modding for the Logitech, you can also change your steering wheels. There's many steering wheel options, and I'll have soon something from MVH Studios, the S2, that will have a proprietary QR system of sorts. So check out that one, subscribe to keep up to date. Let's go for the conclusions. And yes, any entry level direct drive will basically curb stomp the Logitech wheels and it's really not funny. But does it mean though that's worthwhile to ignore the Logitech wheels and go for the Fanatec or Mozza or whatever? Generally, yes, but there are a few things to keep in mind and that could make the CSLDD or any direct drive a worse choice than going for the Logitech G29. So essentially the Logitech wheels have everything you want for a conscious buyer, a budget conscious buyer. It's basically one thing or add the shifter and you have everything. It has a desk lamp, you can add the shifter for 39 and it basically works. It works on a PC, it works on the PlayStation. It does everything very well. And I think it's most worthwhile for those who are on a very strict budget. And that should be your first option. For the Logitech G923, it's, you have to pay an extra. Sometimes it's $100 and sometimes even more depending on stock and time of year. And in that case, um, I don't know if it's worthwhile to spend for it when you can just go for the Fanatec CS LDD and you get more options for it and you'll get also a better experience. For me, True Force really only works in one title and that's Gran Turismo 7. On everything else, it's really not worthwhile. And there's really no other real difference between the 29 and the 9 to 3, despite some small rate adjustments on your brake and uh, pedal set. If you're on a budget and you need the PlayStation support, G29. G93, if the price is very close to the 29. If you are a little more flexible on your budget and you can spend the 100 extra and you don't mind that much and you don't need the PlayStation support, Fanatec CS LDD all the way. That's basically it. Check out this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much to all the supporters. Bye.